Hello, Busco families. I hope everyone has been enjoying a great weekend and has been able to get outside and enjoy this beautiful weather. I have received some questions over the past week, and so I wanted to send out some information to help keep everyone informed as a new week begins. I am aware that there have been some questions surrounding my decision to move our school district virtual temporarily. To help provide some context, I thought I would share some data with you. Last school year, our elementary school only experienced three positive student cases of COVID-19 over the entire year. As of last Friday, we have 27 confirmed positive student cases after the first 13 days. After following the required contact tracing procedures, 187 students, or approximately 35% of the student body, was quarantined at CES. At the junior-senior high, we currently have nine positive student cases. However, contact tracing often affects more students at the secondary level due to the way that class schedules work. As a result, 178 students, or approximately 26% of the student body, was in quarantine. In addition, we had several staff members test positive and be quarantined, including several key members of our cafeteria staff. Because of these realities, I felt it best to make the proactive decision to shift to virtual temporarily until September 7th. This move will allow sufficient time for the majority of these quarantine periods to end and will also slow down any possible transmission of the virus within our classrooms. Since we were able to make this change proactively and because we have not observed any transmission within any of our extracurricular groups so far this year, I felt it appropriate to allow our student activities to continue when possible. While I of course knew that this decision would invite criticism, I am committed to disrupting as few things as possible for our children who have already had to sacrifice so much over the last 18 months. Of course, if an individual activity is significantly impacted by quarantines or positive cases, then it will need to stop temporarily as well. As I've shared in previous videos, all of Indiana's public schools are still required under Indiana law to follow the direction of the Indiana Department of Health regarding contact tracing and quarantine. It is of course not my place to speak to what any other district is or is not doing. However, I will once again say that I have confirmed that this is a requirement for all schools multiple times with various legal experts and Indiana officials. To be clear, there is nothing that I or the rest of the Smith Green staff would like more than to see the quarantine requirements end, as every one of us wants our students to be at school with us in person every single day. However, an important part of my job is to ensure that our district stays in compliance with the law. Indiana's public schools have a very long list of laws that govern everything we do. This large book sitting beside me is the current publication of the laws that pertain to Indiana's public schools. As public entities that fall under the jurisdiction of the Indiana State Legislature, we of course do not have the authority to decide which laws we choose to follow. With that said, we are actively trying to improve the situation under the current requirements. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, I have been meeting regularly with our county health officials to share our data and look for ways that we may be able to reduce quarantines while still doing our part to keep our community healthy. My meeting with Dr. Box last Monday was focused on this same goal. While I, of course, cannot put our school district in a position that defies a lawful order, I feel that it is just as important that I am an advocate for our children and our community and work with those in control of these requirements in order to help be part of the solution. Based on our recent conversations, I remain hopeful that changes are on the horizon that will improve some of our concerns. In the meantime, our staff continues to review and adjust our own local procedures to find any possible solutions that reduce the likelihood of students being quarantined while still meeting the current requirements. As always, I will continue sharing updates with you as things develop. On a personal note, many of you have reached out over the last week to offer your support and encouragement and for that, I am always grateful. I am also thankful for those who have reached out to share your concerns with me and to ask questions to better understand the situation. It goes without saying that the past 18 months have been very challenging for all of us. And of course, none of these decisions are made easily or without considering as many factors as possible. While it is expected that not everyone will agree with every decision that is made, I also believe that those who know me personally know my commitment and concern for our community, our families, and most importantly, our children. That same commitment is shared by every member of our staff here at Smith Green. We miss each one of our students, and we cannot wait for you to be back at school with us soon. Please continue to reach out to our staff if there is anything we can do to help you, or if your child needs assistance or support in any way. I sincerely hope that each of you have enjoyed a relaxing and healthy weekend with family and friends. Have a great evening, and I'll be in touch again soon.